Hey, y'all, welcome back to the Late Night Vision Show. Man, we've got a great show for you and a very special guest. But before we get to that, I want to remind everybody how to find us. Uh, the Late Night Vision Show, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, please go subscribe there. Also, on any of the podcast sharing apps, that's iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. You know all the rest. I don't even know all of them. But what I want to do right now, bring in my good buddy, Jason, because he has the pleasure to introduce our special guest. What's going on, Jason? Hey, Hans, how are you tonight? Man, I'm great and cannot wait to hear from our guest because he's got a lot to share and Lord knows I need the help doing with what he's going to tell us to do. That's exactly <laughs> right. We're excited tonight. We have got Mr. Byron South. Uh, he is going to be on the podcast tonight and he's going to talk to us uh, about coyote hunting and predator hunting. So uh, I want to introduce Byron. I know that most people that listen to this podcast are probably already very familiar with Byron, but I want to read this bio because I'm going to tell you something. Uh, this man is very accomplished and uh, he's got a, a bio that uh, is, is extremely impressive. Uh, I was telling everybody before the show, if I wrote my bio, it would be hard to get two <laughs> sentences. Maybe even a compound sentence would be hard. But I want to tell you real oh, quick I think about... You're, I think you're flattering yourself a little bit. Yeah, there, it's Jason, true. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife would say the same thing. Well, well, I'm going to I'm gonna read real quick, uh, tell you all about Byron before we bring him in. So Byron is one of the most recognized and respected figures in the world of predator hunting. Uh, his experience is uh, spanned for over four decades, and he has hunted in over 40 states, Canada, and Africa. He is successfully called in and filmed not only coyotes, bobcats, hogs, fox, but also bears and wolves in Alaska, alligators in the southern swamps, and most of Africa's predators, including lions, leopards, hyena, and jackal. Most of those things I don't want to call towards me. Uh, Byron's recognition... Uh, increased a whole lot, uh, became a household name for a lot of people when he started producing Coming to the Call. It was a series of videos they started back in 2000. And these videos uh, not only had incredible footage of coyotes and bobcats and some of the most incredible footage actually ever captured on film. And they were not only entertaining, but they were also very instructional and helped a lot of people become better predator hunters. Another interesting fact about Byron is that he signed one of the pr first professional endorsement agreements that Remington, or, no, I back up, the first, I should say, <laughs> professional endorsement agreement that Remington Arms ever offered in the company's 200-year history. And with that, Remington offered a Byron South Signature Edition rifle that Byron helped design. He is also a longtime member of the Realtree Pro Staff, and he is the co-owner and CEO of Convergent Hunting Solutions, and they produce some of the most innovative hunting products on the market today, made in the USA, and those products include the Convergent Bullet HP Caller and the very new, very awesome small Sidewinder Call. And I am proud to say that Outdoor Legacy is a Convergent dealer, and we, Hans and I both use these calls, both the Sidewinder and the Convergent, and they are awesome. So, Mr. Byron South, the man, welcome to the Late Night Vision Show. Well, thank you, guys. And i uh, just uh, start off by saying I'm a big fan of the show, and uh, I tell you, uh, I look forward to every every time I, I get an email or or, or uh, a notification the new shows out. I I'm a big fan of the show. You Thank guys you. That have a lot of good information over here. So Thank you very well, much. We appreciate it. Yeah, and and after that bio, man, I don't know if we have time for the rest of the stuff. We have to show a little bit early, but we do. <laughs> well, you ought to see what I left I, out. <laughs> I'll say this: I tell people all the um, you know most people have a real job and. Uh, I'm I'm kind of sorry. I'd rather hunt than I had work. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it, it's turned into work, believe me. But yeah. I enjoy what I do. And they say if you enjoy what you do, you do. You'll never work a day in your life. And so exactly. That's so, uh, Jason talked a little bit about the bullet uh, HP and the Sidewinder from Convergent, um, and that's something again that Jason said that you and uh, that him and I both use a lot. I've I tell you what. Um, both of them stay in my hunting backpack and they are strapped to my back everywhere I go because, uh, of what we do with walking around and, and hunting. And, you know, we do a lot of hog hunting, but we have a lot of uh, listeners out there, uh, across the country, uh, that are big time coyote hunters. And, you know, with the crossover from, you know, night vision, thermal hunting, and really what, uh, you know, what, what our show is based on and the coyote, uh, predator hunting kind of meshes together. Sure does. Uh, 
you know, really with your uh, world uh, world experience and, and wealth of knowledge on the topic, we definitely wanted to have you on. And I knew you know you have a bunch to say about it with the uh, uh, kind of some of the bullet points of what you want to talk about. But it's basically getting started right, calling predators. So I'm going to let you go right now, kind of into some of your techniques and uh, some of your tips to help some of us out. Because I definitely, I've got my pen and paper. I'm going to be taking notes <laughs> as you're talking because I need all the help I can get. Uh, it's but, true. Uh, I've hunted with him, yeah. and he does. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We we can call him in, but um, it's after when they get called in what to do with them. Then we <laughs> we get winded pretty. I guess we stink a lot. We get winded pretty easy. <laughs> well, you know, I used to tell guys when I used to be traveling a lot, giving seminars. I'd tell guys they'd come to my seminars. They'd all be standing there waiting on me to give them some grain of truth that's going to propel them to the next level of prayer call. And I, mm-hmm. I used to tell guys, look, here's the deal. Probably what's going to happen is when I get through with my seminar, uh, hopefully what you'll gain from this is that uh, you'll think, well, if that guy can do it, I can too. Cause he, <laughs> he's no different than me. And so a lot of guys really overthink this deal. And so what I try to encourage people to do is don't overthink it. It's really not that difficult if you'll just, you know, keep it simple and do the basics, do them very well, and try not taking shortcuts on the basic principles of calling. You'll be successful, and then, you know, maybe we can come back at a later time and, and go over some more advanced tactics, but if you'll kind of hone those those few little basics uh, and just do them over and over again, over time, you'll those will get better. But if you'll start with just the basics, and we do this, I've been, I've been doing this since I was 10 years old, I really don't want to tell you how old I am, but I'm, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be 55 here in about a month. Uh-oh. So I've been doing this a long time, and so I've honed them a little bit, but I, I'm, I'm continuously honing them and learning. And But it, it's, it all goes back to the basics, that a guy that's just getting started out, he can do the basics. And so, uh, you know, I, I tell people just keep it simple. main thing is, is uh, you can't call an animal that's either seen you, heard you, or smelled you. Okay. So if he don't, if he, so you, uh, you can't call a predator also that's not there. So it kind of starts, right. keep it simple and, and kind of have an idea of where you think the predator's at. And then, then uh, you want to approach that position, you know, with the wind in your favor, because uh, they're a big deal. I mean, they're not as smart as we are. A lot of people think they're extremely intelligent. They are to a degree, but uh, an average human should be able to outthink a cat. Their main defenses are, are their their eyes and their ears and their nose and heavily on their nose because they have a the ability to smell one part per billion. A lot of guys think they might be able to beat their nose. It's never going to happen. Mm. So if you can kind of get that through your head, you're way ahead of the game. So keep, mm. uh, you know, tonight you, you guys we were going to do this podcast and I got to thinking about uh, man, I, I'm, it's kind of cool off a little bit at night and I'm, I'm thinking about going. So one of the first things I started thinking about was, okay, where is the wind going to be blowing tonight? Mm-hmm. And uh, for why in July it's blowing out of the northeast, I don't know, but it, uh, <laughs> it is, yeah. and it's going to cool off a little bit. So I started thinking about places I could go tonight where a northeast wind would be in my favor, which is kind of difficult, but that's where I started. And so it, keep it simple like that. You can't go into a place with the wind at your back. Uh, you kind of have an idea at night, you know, you really don't know where they're going to be because, I mean, they, they move a lot at night. But the main thing is you want to pick a place where you can get in there undetected, you know, the wind in your favor, and uh, and get set down. The moon, even at night, I, I'll tell guys, you know, in the daytime, you really don't want to set where you're staring into the sun. Right. And uh, mm-hmm. so at night, it's kind of the same deal. Uh, coyotes especially can see very, very well at night, cats and fox. As well, even though you got night vision, you can't see very well. That doesn't mean they can't see well. So if you got a lot mm-hmm. of moon, you still want to find some shadows or something to get into. But pick a spot where you can get there uh, as quietly and quickly as you can. Get set up and, and still, even though it's night, concealment is, is is kind of a deal. You need kind of you know if there's any moon at all, you kind of want to get you a shadow, and then get up and start calling. Uh, and back to this, keep it simple deal. A lot of guys, they don't know what sound to play at first. You know, um, I, I, this, before I get too far along, uh, I, I want to say this. I, your success, you don't want to have one stand because, I mean, uh, like tonight, let me back up a little bit. Tonight, we've got three or four or five stands set up. So I've kind of made a plan where I'm going to go tonight. And, uh, mm-hmm. and then after that, 
we'll kind of get into the call sequences and stuff like that. So yeah. before we get to that point, if y'all got any questions, but you know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Byron. So, you know, if, you know, the, the keep it simple and, and the basic strategies are, you know, definitely something I've got a, a couple of different questions for you. What do you say to the, to the people out there that, um, are not fortunate enough to be able to make, uh, several different stands. Maybe they got just one piece of property, uh, and they don't have a lot of access points into that property. Sure. What, what could you suggest? First of all, what can you suggest to somebody that has limited access to, to land, uh, and they're trying to still access land depending on wind. And also do you, uh, subscribe or believe in any type of scent hiders sprays that you kind of see? I mean, is it something that you use a lot of? I don't. I don't. Okay. Uh, people used okay. to ask me that all the time. What kind of cover scent you use? And I tell mm-hmm. them Copenhagen and Break Free. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> if, if a coyote gets downwind of you, and I'll tell you this, I used to use all kinds of different cover scents and stuff. And I, I, I tell you, if I, if I'd have thought drinking it would have helped, I'd have probably drank it at one point. <laughs> but <clears throat> if a coyote gets downwind of you, like I said, it can smell one part per billion. So, I mean, if you ever seen these drug dogs work or a bird dog work, or, it's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I mean, a bird dog can smell where a quail walk. Mm-hmm. And so the very idea that you're going to put a suit on or a, spray some mm-hmm. fox PP on you and it's going to cover you, <laughs> it doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's going to smell what you had for breakfast. I mean, he's going to smell, you know, when you got diesel. I mean, And if you mm-hmm. think that you're going to put something on there to c- cover or mask that, it's just not going to happen. So the best thing to do is understand that you're not going to beat it. So... Yeah get that wind in your favor. And so, you know, if I had limited places to call, uh, I just wouldn't call them unless the wind conditions were just right. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you the good thing about predator hunting and hog hunting is, is similar as well as, you know, a lot of guy don't want you to hunt deer on his place, but a lot of, a lot of people don't mind you hunting coyotes. And that opens a, a door. If you kind of, you know, are successful, he may know somebody or has a friend or a relative that's got another place. And so, you, you really, you know, to be successful hunting hogs or coyotes, you really need to have several places because, uh, and so put together several places, that way you have more options. And for a guy getting started, I mean, just don't be scared to ask, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but as far as uh, cover scent, if, if the wind's wrong, just don't call it. Uh, if mm-hmm. you're- so, so asking my wife to wash my st- clothes and special detergents and all that stuff ain't going to work. No, no. <laughs> <All> those... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, so, sons, but no. Yeah. no. Oh man. So <laughs> go ahead and, and go ahead and talk a little bit about call sequences. Cause I know Jason's got a bunch of questions, but I, that's to me, I, if I was going to say there's a silver bullet, it's got to be in the call sequences. And I know there's not a silver bullet. But <laughs> He's going to, hey, that's, he can't give all the trade secrets. Again, here, so. I, mean, I don't <laughs> care. I'll tell you anything I know. But, <laughs> but it, well, the call sequences, you know, uh, a lot of guys, back when I first started, of course, there wasn't very many electronic calls, and we had some record players and some tape players and stuff. And uh, Wait a minute. I, hang on. Did you, I, <laughs> I, 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 I know it's not, I'm not. I really need to let you go, but I have to go. Did you say a record player? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first. I mean, I used to have a, the tape player or, you know, when I oh, was. Oh, no, a, they had a, record players. Sure did. Yeah. Record players. Yeah, I, had, I used one. And, uh... <laughs> Okay, that's, we got to get you back on. I got to hear about this. This is, uh, oh, must be in the I, Smithsonian. Oh, yeah, yeah. not finding the needle. You know, put the, especially if your record wasn't <laughs> good and we're jump or something. That was interesting. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. great. All right, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm just I'm, that's all I'm going to think <laughs> so, about the rest of the well, show. I, is I tell you what, we don't have to worry about it. We've got the bullet now, so that's uh, right. So, Bluetooth, Bluetooth, exactly, that's right. exactly. Technology's gone a long way, but you know, mm-hmm. back in the day, you know, talking about call sequences, uh, hand calls was a big thing. And so mm-hmm. on the packages, it would say, you know, blow your call for two minutes and then wait five or blow it for 30 seconds and wait five. Well, what happens is, say a coyote's out there at 150, 200 yards or, or maybe further than that, 500, 600 yards out there and you blow that call, it may take him a little bit to decide to come. Well, then about the time he decides to come, you quit blowing the call. So mm-hmm. he don't know whether did, did something get that rabbit? Did it move? Did, he don't know what happened. So now you've got his wheels turning, but he does know he can smell it at a great distance. So he starts to go downwind of it. And so mm-hmm. you're losing him at that point. Well, then but if he doesn't get downwind of you at that, but before you start to blow the call, you might pick him up and get him coming again. And then you stop again. 
So what's mm -hmm. he do? He goes back down wind. So as far as call sequences go, we like constant sound. And that's what's so good about electronic game calls. With a hand call, if you continuously blow a hand call after about five minutes, you'll pass out. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and so with hand calls, we used to do it kind of the buddy system. I'd blow for a little bit and have my buddy pick it up when I'd kind of get winded to keep. But I found over time, if you'll keep that sound going, it gives that predator something to hone in on, and you'll get a whole lot less coyotes downwind of you. Cats, mm -hmm. especially cats, will quit a call. So you've got to keep their attention, and they'll come to you. Some guys will tell you a rabbit can't blow for 15 minutes. They don't know that. <laughs> So it doesn't matter. <laughs> They're not that smart. <laughs> but if you'll keep it excited and keep that, he's got three forms of confirmation. His eyes, his ears, and his nose. So hopefully he's far enough he hadn't seen you or, or heard you, and you're quiet enough getting in there. So you're playing on the ears at that point. When you start to call, uh, he, he starts coming to you. If that stops, he's going to try to try to find you with his eyes and his nose because he's probably not close enough to see you at that point. So you d never want that to happen. So that's a huge tip is keep that call playing. Uh, that electronic call, you can keep it away from you, you know, 30, 40 yards, and the tension's on it. Once he gets to a certain point where he thinks he should be able to see it, uh, if he doesn't see something moving, and that's why the little decoy flag's on the top of that bullet. If it's moving and he sees it, now you've got his ears and his eyes pacified and a lot of times he'll never try to get that third form of confirmation with his nose he'll come right straight to it and if you watch our videos and on youtube and stuff you'll see a lot of coats that we kill are, are right on top of the call we almost won't shoot them unless they're right on top of the call so those are huge tips i mean for a new guy turn the sound on and let it play as far as what to play i'm a big believer in just the, the standard rabbits and we've got some really good rabbit sounds all these all of our rabbit sounds, with the exception of one, is the real deal. Uh, we have a sound mm -hmm. called Byron's Go To. That's one of my favorite old hand calls. And uh, if y'all can hear that train going by, hopefully you can't over the podcast. But <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear it. It's okay. So, it's, uh, well, it's I sorry. apologize for the train, but uh, Byron's Go To is just me on a hand call. Uh, we have a lot of success with that sound. Uh, the rest are just rabbits. It doesn't matter if it's a ra jack rabbit or a cottontail. A lot of people say, well, we don't have jack rabbits here. The coyote doesn't know that. The emotional content <laughs> what is what he's... I've called lions in Africa with a jackrabbit sound. I've called coyotes mm -hmm. in, in Arizona using a black back jackal sound. It's it's mm -hmm. the, the emotional content in it. And so um, just keep it exciting. All of our sounds have a lot of emotional content, t terror and fear and stuff in them, and constantly playing. It keeps them excited and keeps them coming to that call. And so... I tell people the quicker you can get that coat to the call, the less likelihood of something going wrong. Uh, you know, if you mess around with him on and off the call, swapping sounds, you know, make it confusing to him, or give him a chance to get downwind of you, you're not going to be very successful. And I would, uh, I actually uh, did the math on it one time. I think 75, 85 percent, something has been years. I haven't quoted this in a long time, but I think it's, it's over 75 percent of the coats respond within the first five minutes many of mm. those are within the first two or three and mm. after about five minutes your success rate starts dropping off after about 15 you're way down so i yeah. kind of liken it to gambling so like in, in las vegas if your odds go from 75 percent to 20 percent mm -hmm. at a gambling table you're gonna get up and find another table <laughs> that's right so you better quit right? if you're a busy guy and just have weekends to hunt you know, uh, 15, 20 minutes, move to another stand. And that goes back to, you know, mm -hmm. you know, having different places to hunt and stuff. But I'll go, uh, well, my call sequences, I'll start out with a really good rabbit. Like our cottontail number one is a great sound. Uh, there's several, uh, the Byron's go to, uh, baby cottontail, uh, just anything with a lot of, you know, emotional content to it, which all of our sounds do. They're just a little different. It's kind of like what I tell people is like a tackle box. You know, you go fishing, you don't just take a spinner bait. You take a, a plug, you know, several different lures and right. just find out what they're hitting that day. Or this particular bass wants, you know, a spinner bait or a, a deep diving plug or what. So you just throw different baits at them until you get them to take the bait. And so that's all your, that's the advantage to having several different sounds in your tackle box or on your app to, to throw at him. And don't be scared to do that. Sometimes I'll go through 
five or six sounds on a stand. If I really know something's out there, I'm going to keep throwing something at him until I can kind of get his attention and maybe get him headed my way. Um, and that's that's basically what I do. It's what I'll do tonight. It's what I did 10 years mm-hmm. ago. So it's real simple. <laughs> Yeah, you just uh, that that was going to ask that question about basically and, and use the fishing analogy as well as is how that you know played. But you you give the answer there. Just keep keep throwing stuff at it. So I do have another question because this is something that that Hans and I've talked about a lot uh, when we're hunting together, and that is and you know we're normally using the the bullet HP. And it's how loud to turn it up. And anybody who's ever used the bullet knows uh, that is the benefit of this call is that, you know, if you're hunting big fields and wide open places, you can turn that thing up and the sound is really, really good. Uh, a lot better than if you just get a, a, a cheap Walmart or, or, you know, Amazon speaker and play. You, you need the bullet speaker. But how loud do you run that thing? Because, you know, Han, sometimes I think he's trying to, you know, call coyotes for three <laughs> sure. counties over. And and I don't, and I'm thinking, gosh, turn that thing down. I mean, if, it, if I was a coyote, I'd run the other way. I'd um, think, man. But, well, but no, coyote, seriously, uh, how, how loud? What, what how loud? That's a $64,000 question. I'm, That's why coyote, I ask it. <laughs> I, I am uh, uh, shot with no ear protection for too long. Hmm. Uh, finally have suppressors and all this kind of late, but... Uh, anyway, uh, so my hearing's not that good. So a lot of older guys like us tend to play the sound too loud. The other thing with the bullet or most of these electronic calls, that speaker's pointed away from you. So you don't really get the impression of how high or how loud you're playing. So, um, you, you don't need as much as you think you do. Coyotes have big ears that are articulating, meaning that they, you know, they can turn one without turning the other. So they can listen in front and back, side, whatever. And they, they use those articulating ears to hone in and precisely pinpoint where that sound is coming from. So their ears, ears are very good. We called a coyote. We actually have a video on our website uh, from so far away. I would say it was a mile or so in 20 plus mile hour winds in Nevada. That coyote was so far away. When I first saw it, I couldn't believe that. I thought, man, there's something out there moving. And I kept watching it. And finally I said, man, that's coming, whatever that is. And it's on our, it's on our website. So you can go look at it. It's windy Nevada coyote or something. That's in 20 plus mile hour winds from over a mile away uh, with the bullet. A lot of guys think, well, man, I need this huge, big old speaker. You really don't. And I've Mm -hmm. had the benefit of being able to record a lot of, of rabbits and stuff. And and they're, they're very loud, but they're, you know, uh, the bullet will get louder, way louder than any rabbit has a right to. I mean, they're, they, (laughs) they, they, it gets very loud. So, uh, and don't underestimate their ears. Now, uh, with the hogs, I think Glenn shared, I mean, you can play it too loud. So uh, we usually start out about half volume, and if it's really windy, and just kind of use a little common sense here, you know, if you're in kind of tighter cover, uh, you might start out a little lower. And what I do, if I'm calling in tighter cover, is maybe use a, a little more supple sound, like a mm-hmm. bird sound or something like that. And uh, because a rabbit's loud, uh, when he goes to scream. Uh, he's not playing. He's screaming bloody murder. So mm-hmm. uh, it, it's kind of loud. So you, it's, but you can get too loud. Mm-hmm. So about medium volume, unless it's really windy, would be the answer. I uh, well, so then oh, go ahead. I, I love the way that Jason found a way to throw me under the bus while he was asking a question. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I, I was well. Wait a minute. I'm not done. Hang, hang on. <laughs> part part two of that is so so every time I, I hunt with Hans and we're calling. Uh, what what we run into is uh, normally so far what I figured out is everything you said not to do we've done. <laughs> I think the last time we went we were we were le- okay no this is serious we were leaned up against the truck with water burger cups on the truck. <laughs> this is no joke standing True on a hill True story. on a hill we could see about four hundred acres cut over wide open we had about a 15 mile an hour wind at our backs and we had the call as loud as it would go and so so far i've learned we've done everything wrong but but when i'm with hans water burger cup in one hand you know i tell you this you brought up a good point jason there are times when i will call with the wind at my back but I, I'm, I'm expecting something to come out from either side and sure. the cow's going to have to get downwind of you 
to, to for for him to smell yeah. you. So if you can see downwind, a lot of guys, I know mm-hmm. some guys up in, in some of that bigger country that, that will call regardless, but they can see anything. You sure. know, in East Texas or in tighter cover, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, uh, you, you kind of, it's not a bad idea to have somebody watching your downwind side, but mm-hmm. uh, you're not going to call me any, because if they can be downwind of you 30 yards here and you can't see them. Well, I know we're not talking about hogs, but I have, with the Bullet HP, have called up hogs behind me and yeah. i mm-hmm. now when my buddy's out he's watching the back side because we're <laughs> i mean yeah. we had him come up from behind us and we heard him grunting that's how close they were behind us and none of us wow. were really paying attention and i tell you what we turned around and started shooting but uh it sent some uh the hairs on the back of my neck had been standing up i think they were so <laughs> brittle they, br- they, they <laughs> broke off <laughs> well so where i was going with this is and this is but b- being serious uh, we will get up there and we see, you know, we, this last time, all those things I said were true, <laughs> but we did have a double <laughs> running in from downwind and we knew, I mean, it was just, again, it was, it was just a bad situation where they were coming from and, and they did, they, they circled on us and got downwind. But w- even if everything is perfect, how do you know when to shoot? Because I, I know that's something that you and I've talked sure. about and that you, you could get into. And I never know because I always, if they get anywhere within what I think my range is, so say maybe that's 150, 200 yards, I'm thinking he's he's just, I have like this, you know, I guess glass half empty. He's going to run. He's going to stop. I better shoot sure. now. So what, what do you do? I know y'all get them close. I'm monitoring my wind constantly trying to figure out where that coyote's going to, if he, if and when he's going to win me and where he's going to be when he wins me. And I try to shoot him before he gets to that point. And we have what we call hard chargers sometimes, which we love. Is a coyote that just, man, as soon as he hears the call, when, the first time you see him, he's coming as hard as he can. So if he's not going to cross where I walked, and that's another point, I mean, even where you walk, they'll they'll smell that and, and mm-hmm. booger and, and run off. So even if, so, I mean, it don't have to smell the wind or your scent coming off. You don't smell where you walk, but it, I don't got an idea when that coat's coming in. If he's checking up, and what I mean by checking up, a lot of guys think when a coat stops, he's fixing. He's just checking up. He may be waiting on his buddy. So if he's kind of looking around, you know, looking back over his shoulder, or kind of looking around, you can kind of tell. Well, hey, there's probably another coyote coming. Mm-hmm. If you can tell if if he sees you as well, if he sees something out, he's looking right at you. If he stops and he's looking right at you, especially in the daytime, you probably should shoot that coyote. Mm-hmm. But if he's coming hard or if he stops and does what we call checking up, just kind of looking around, uh, let that coat, he's probably going to come on. And the benefit to that is he's probably waiting on a second or third coat. So just wait, let him come on in. Don't don't rush your shot and, and get him on in there closer because it's a lot easier to kill one, you know, when he's 30 yards and 30, rather than 300. So don't mm-hmm. kind of be easy on the trigger and, and, you know, watch his body language. And I'll tell you this, too, after the shot, uh, a lot of guys, you know, they want to take the pictures and who raw and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> we kill a ton of coyotes, bobcats and stuff. One of the best nights I had this, this year, I, I actually went by myself. It, I just, it was one of those nights I thought, man, everything's coming together. I killed, uh, I shot the first bobcat uh, about three minutes into the stand, and I was by myself, so I just stayed because I knew I really wanted to kill a coyote there. I stayed uh, I killed a coyote at about the seven minute mark and I really felt like, man, this is a good st- spot. I really need to stay at about the 15 minute mark. I killed my second cat. Oh, that was all in one man. stand. Now this is all after shooting. Now, even if you're not shooting suppressed, I did that back before I was shooting suppressor. So that, that gunshot really doesn't mean a whole lot to them unless you're shooting at them, you know? Mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. So I killed two, two cat or two bobcats and a coyote on that stand Went and made a second stand, and I killed a coyote, a single. And I, after I shot him, a lot of times when I shoot a coyote, I'll go to what we call a kaya center, a distressed coyote. And uh, that'll you a lot of times bring that second or third coyote in because what happens is, is coyotes are usually paired up, or there's more than one. So uh, when it, the first coyote goes in, uh, uh, you know, when you shoot it, don't just leave. There's usually another coyote right there close i hit that kaya sound it's kind of like us if we hear a you know a car wreck people screaming mm-hmm. we've got to run out there and see what's going on so that other coyote's kind of that same way you know a second i got a rodeo coming on here 
<laughs> so, so yeah, so basically what you're saying is, and, and that's something new that, that I haven't mer- heard many people talking about, but so what you're saying is after you shoot uh, that first coyote, or, or even if you shoot and miss, don't give up sure. your position. Uh, just, Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Just keep calling, keep calling, because they don't know what that was. They don't, you know... You know, they're not saying, oh, well, that's Hans over there. He's got that 6'5 Creed. Boy, woman. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know. So, uh, they, well, I mean, it's, and it, it happens always... real quick and thunder or, or lightning or whatever. They, mm-hmm. You know, they hear that kind of stuff and, you know, they don't think nothing about it. Well, what I've always heard and what kind of the way that uh, we've always lived is once you shoot, that's you might as well just move yeah. on to the next spot. Yeah. No, sir. Mm-hmm. And, and here, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. That was my second stand. I killed the second. The, the second coyote so i had two bobcats and, and two coyotes and i thought man i know where there's some fox if i could go kill two fox uh man that'd make a cool picture two mm-hmm. fox two bobcats and two coyotes you know so i went to my house and these fox i've been seeing these fox tracks back in the woods back behind my house so i went back there well i ended up walking up on a deer so i was watching the deer and that gun of a fox didn't show up <laughs> well, i hadn't even started calling so i just got set up and got with my, my Rifle uh, thermal turned on and started squeaking at him with just with my lips. And here he came. He got behind a brush pile, and I couldn't get him out behind that brush pile, so I kept squeaking and looked and heard something to my left and turned, and there was another fox had ran out of the oh brush behind gosh. me. So I spun around and shot him, and uh, the first fox that kind of got behind the brush pile took off running. Well, I couldn't get him to stop, didn't have a shot. So now I set the bullet out just right at my feet, right in front of me, and put on a fox distress sound, thinking, well, I'll get that second fox to come back, you know. But as soon as I hit that gray fox uh, in distress, a red fox in distress sound that's on their app there, um, here comes what I thought was a coat, just hard charging to the call. Well, I didn't want him to get in that brushy ditch, ditch you know, where I'd lost the first fox, so I kind of woofed at him to get him to stop, which brings up another tip. If a coyote's coming in real hard, you don't want to start just blazing away at him when he's running. A lot of times you can just woof like that real loud, and you can get him to stop, mm-hmm. or if they're really close, just squeak at them, or just simply reach up and turn the call off. Sometimes that'll do it. Just anything's different to kind of get them to stop for an extending shot. Well, when I woofed at that, what I thought was a coyote, it just sped up, hit the ditch, and I lost it. I realized when I did that, that's a bobcat. And he was oh, coming wow. like a coat. And I shot him at about 10 yards. So now I, I, killed, <laughs> uh, I, I killed him. And I still hadn't got my second fox. But I kept calling. I stayed. And about 10 minutes later, I got the initial first fox that I saw to come back. So wow. it kind of screwed my numbers up. I had three bobcats <laughs> and two fox and, and two coats. But matter of fact, I'll send you all that picture. It was a, it was a, that was three stands. Wow. And so if I had, you know, if I'd have just, you know, I could have ended up with just a bobcat at the first stand, left, killed the coat, left, and then went and killed one of those fox and then left. Mm-hmm. But uh, I easily doubled my numbers that night by just sticking to my guns and kept calling. Man, I, so. I've never had one of those nights. And, and you know, one thing. And that, those don't happen. Yeah. They happen to you every time you go out, right, Byron? That's just guaranteed. No. Yeah. no. And, and, again, too, you got to have realistic expectations. Old Byron goes sometimes, and I'll have a dry spell. We'll, we'll cough, you know, a few stands and not kill anything, but and get to scratching your head. And it's all you can do is ask them to come. Do not get frustrated. There's a lot of guys that get out there. and We have guys who call us, hey, this call don't work. And we'll start talking <laughs> to them. Well, they, they, they went out four times. Like, for crying out loud, guy. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so right. you got to, you know, keep your hook wet and figure, you know, and learn. It's, it's, it's not hard. Like I said in the, in the beginning, keep it simple. And if you'll do the basics, do them well. And do them over and over again, and sooner or later you'll hone those basics. And, and, and uh, but I mean, you can kill them. We I preach the basics all the time, and that's what we do. Well, well Byron, nothing special. We're we're about out of time, but I've already see a problem here, and the problem is is that I've got about fifty questions to ask, and there's a lot of things that I want to get into. So what I want to ask now is, can we get you back another time to give us some more of these advanced things? Let us ask some questions and get more in depth. To. 
We'd love to. All right. We're going we're to have to do that then because uh, I've got a lot of questions. And I, I Hans, I don't know about you, but yeah, I, would, I got notes written all over this paper. Well, and yeah. We've been doing a lot of stuff wrong. I can say that, you know. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, since you threw me under the bus, Jason, I'm going to go ahead and throw you. At what oh, point no. is it? Jason likes to talk really loud when he's out. Colin, you that know, he's all, not he's true. all giggling and laughing. Like, your problem, he's giggling yeah. and laughing like a teenage schoolgirl. What, <laughs> what is, advice do you have for him uh, yeah, when it comes to yeah. <laughs> now? Uh, hey, let I, me ask you this, I, Byron. So like Jason said, uh, you and I uh, are, are all of us are using the bullet HPs and the sidewinder. Mm -hmm. Where can they find some more information uh, about you, about convergent, the callers, all that? Where can they find yet? Well, our website is convergenthunting.com. You can go there. There's a ton of information there. Uh, we're located in Big Sandy, Texas. Uh, our telephone number is 903-636-4222. Uh, somebody will be here uh, 9 to 5, five days a week uh, to answer any questions you have. Our products are uh, mostly all made in Texas, like the bullets made right here in Texas. The side made right here in Texas. Our hand calls, we have our parts made in, in, uh, uh, in Utah, and we assemble them here. But, um, our, you know, there's tons of information on our website. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to call us. Well, I'll tell you what, you're right down, Big Sandy is right down the road from Ben Wheeler, by God, Texas, where I'm calling from, and uh, mm -hmm. love them East Texas companies, and love Texas companies especially, so y'all go check them out, go check out Byron South, we are definitely going to have you back, because uh, like Jason said, we've got a lot of information, uh, just what you told us right there, and a lot of questions that we still want to ask you, but thank you again for being on the show, we'll have you back, uh, Jason. Uh, you and I are going to be coming back again. We've got a lot of scope reviews that we're still going to continue doing. Uh, we've got some uh, some hunts coming up with the Pulsar Thermion XP50, which I'm excited <laughs> about slapping that thing on my rifle again and doing some hunts with that. But for Jason and I, I want to say thank you for joining us. We're going to be back again next Thursday for another uh, episode of the Late Night Vision Show. Y'all take care. Stay safe in the field. Keep making them bacon pancakes and them Predator and Coyote pancakes as well. So Y'all <laughs> take care.